Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Top of Virginia Regional Chamber 2022 Leadership Advance. I'm Cynthia Schneider, as you know, uh, your CEO, and I am just thrilled that we were able to pull this off. It is uh, quite the exercise in sticking to it these days. Like, you just got to keep trying and um, holding off as long as you can to hope that the direction goes the way you want it to. So I uh, thank you all for being here. Um, Kind of the order of the day, as you see on your agenda, will open up here. Um, we are going to um, present to you the state of the chamber first thing this morning. So we're kind of going to maybe go a little backwards, and maybe some people would think. But so we're going to start with the big overview. What did we do in 2021? How are things going? I'm um, going to let you meet the staff and hear about the things they're doing. And then we'll take a break for lunch. We're going to install you all officially as uh, directors. Uh, then we'll take a nice lunch break. And then when we come back, we'll kind of narrow down to your board responsibilities and then end the day getting your input on things you're seeing in the community and in the chamber itself and um, how we can work together. So I'd like to start the day and open with prayer. James Emo is going to open us with prayer this morning. And then followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, Patty Sullenberg will lead us in the prayer. Okay. And Cynthia, thank you. And it's great to see everyone. Yeah, glad that we are able to get here and have this meeting. So if you would, if you prefer to bow your heads, um, we'll pray and just say, God, thank you. God, thank you for bringing us here, allowing us to come here um, as a leadership team uh, to support Cynthia and to support our staff and really to support our community. Um, you've placed us in this community, this beautiful Shenandoah Valley and the businesses that we have the opportunity to support. We take this time to pray for them, pray for their success and that you've helped them navigate um, this time that we find ourselves in. And as we are here today, we pray for new ideas, just better opportunities, new ways that we can best serve and come together and just use our gifts that you've given to us. We thank you for all of this and we pray all of this in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You guys ready for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. A couple little housekeeping things, the big elephant in the room with our COVID protocols. We know that you are adults and are making the decisions that are right for you and your health, so whatever you need to do to be comfortable and feel safe today, we respect that. I want to welcome Christy Powers, who is with us here over under the little tree. If everybody, if throughout the day, <laughs> throughout the day, if you get a chance, go by and connect with Christy and say hi. She needed to stay home today. And we're also missing Kevin McCannon today. And if you'll keep him in your prayers, he is in the battle this week. So um, seemed to be OK. He was going to try to join us if he feels up to it. But it sounds like he's having one of those fatiguing days. So uh, he may pop in or out at some point along the way. But you'll be able to connect with them there. Um, bathrooms, as I mentioned earlier, are just out the hall to the left, and um, I think that's it. So uh, without further ado, we're going to give you a beautiful overview. Partly, yeah, let me just say thanks to my staff, our staff. Um, they did all of this prep work. Uh, amazing thing you're going to watch today that just really highlights who we are as a chamber, um, and I want to thank you all individually and my staff for all that you've done to make this happen today. So thank you, and here we go. Hey folks, John Fox here. With my term having come to an end, I'd like to say thank you to all Topper Virginia Regional Chamber members, the Board of Directors, Executive Committee, and TVRC staff, especially Cynthia. I appreciate your support and dedication during my time as Board Chair. We faced the same difficulties as everyone else over the past two years and have responded very well. The switch to virtual, hybrid, and even back to some in-person gatherings has been smooth with always having the safety of our members, board members, and staff in the forefront of our minds. I'm extremely proud of not just the financial state of the chamber, but the direction and leadership of the board of directors, Cynthia, and the entire TVRC staff. We realize that a thriving and vibrant business climate is good for all of us. There's no place for personal agendas or partisanship in the organization, and I can honestly say that I've never witnessed any during the 10 or so years that I've been on committees or on the board of directors. A reminder that board and committee members are just volunteers, answering the call to help out and make our community a better place for not just business, but for everyone. Please reach out if you'd like to be involved. There are always openings on our committees, and we'd love to have your input. 
with an increased focus on advocacy for our members, I'm very excited to see more ways that the TVRC will become even more of an asset to our members and the community as a whole. I now have the pleasure to step back for my final year on the Executive Committee as the immediate past chair and leave this year's heavy lifting to a wonderful group of board members, led by the 2022 board chair, a friend and incredibly bright leader with the perfect temperament for continuing to increase the visibility, relevance, and value of the Topper Virginia Regional Chamber. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce this year's chair, Mr. Scott Harvard. Thank you, Tom. We'll use this later, but uh, it's also an opportunity for me to, to thank you, John, for your leadership. and. Uh, really just say how impressed I've been uh, with the way that you have led this organization over the last year. And I mean, a year in which we never got to meet in person, I don't think. Uh, it was really hard. Uh, you were engaged. You were committed. Uh, you're so focused in. I mean, it's just been very impressive to see how you have conducted yourself with agendas, with projects, and supporting Cynthia. And uh, I know how much she's appreciated it. Uh, as we all have. So thanks for everything you've done for us and for introducing me to bourbons that I never knew existed. So. Very, very happy to do that. Well thank done. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. And we're going to present... Yep. Uh, a little token of our thanks, John. Oh, that's fancy. We present to you a beautiful gavel to nice. put, up, put up on the wall with your bourbon collection. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> thank, thank you, John. <laughs> all right, now we get to uh, introduce our board in its entirety. Charles Daniels is our chair-elect, Carrie Nelson, our vice chair, Carrie, Adrian Taylor, our treasurer, for one more year, uh, Patty Sullenberger is an at-large member of the executive committee as well, Emily Berner, uh, really newly, newly with the Winchester Medical Center from Shenandoah University, and Jenny Grooms, both behind the black mask. <laughs> Jim Geiswhite, the quiet one over here. <laughs> James Emo, who led us in prayer. Wonderfully done. James, thank you. Kevin McCannon, who is not with us this morning. Katrina Mead. Christy Powers uh, on the laptop. Hey, Christy. <laughs> I see you waving anyway. Andy Gale, our, one of our new directors. Andy, welcome. Brian Nieves, also one of our new directors. But as a new director, you get punished. You have to sit at the front table. It's, I don't, it doesn't seem fair. Tom Stamulus, also a new director, and uh, Deborah Taylor. So thank you all for joining us. We really appreciate it. And uh, to our uh, departing directors, Nadine Pottinger, who we're going to miss uh, both on this board and in the community and James Stewart, um, both of whom just contributed so much to this organization and, uh, and continue to be supportive of the chamber. So uh, thank you to uh, both of you folks. And Tracy Vosica, who of course is our former chairman, uh, preceded John Fox and did a great job leading the organization and uh, has paid her dues. So she yeah. gets to, uh, she, she gets to uh, retire from the board this year. So our thanks go out to, uh, to those folks. And now Cynthia is going to lead us in the oath of office for new directors. Is that correct, Cynthia? Correct. Excellent. So if you'll stand, raise your right hand as I administer the oath of office. I do acknowledge that serving as a board member of the top of Virginia Regional Chamber is a position of trust and responsibility. I accept that trust and pledge to serve the organization impartially. I pledge to faithfully execute the duties of my office and adhere to the bylaws of the top of Virginia Regional Chamber. I pledge to exercise my independent judgment in the best interest of the organization. I do solemnly swear to discharge the duties incumbent upon me as a board member of the top of Virginia Regional Chamber to the best of my ability. I do. Thank you, Thank you and welcome to the top of Virginia Regional Chamber Board of Directors. Are you done with me? So there you are, that's your group. So just a reminder to all of our board, these are some of the ways that you can help and we'll expand on this when we get drilled down later in the afternoon, but signing up new members, we have a really lofty goal of building our chamber so that we have a stronger voice in the community. Volunteer on a committee, if you haven't signed up yet, these are the board committees that are available, public policy, workforce development, membership, 
finance, marketing, or you could serve on our event or program committee. Please attend our networking events when we have them. Um, it's really great for you to come and connect with the members, hear what, hear what they have to say, get to know them. Host an event if you can get your business to host an event when possible and encourage your businesses to become a sponsor of an event. It's a great way to market your business, align yourself with the values that we represent in the community. All right, so now we're going to do a little bit of an overview of what we've accomplished as many of you may not know, um, this is our 105th year as a Chamber of Commerce in the top of Virginia region. We believe that together we are more. We're connecting approximately 754 members, I think we're in the 740 range this week, but we're heading up, representing more than 30,000 employees, consisting of businesses large and small, to valuable resources such as marketing, education, advocacy, and sponsorships. Our staff, Vanessa McAllister, Director of Programs and Events, Danita Robel, Director of Membership Development, Corey Campbell, Director of Marketing and Communications, Dan Hitchcock, Membership Development Specialist, Hannah Stewart, Membership Development Specialist, and Julie Schaefer, sorry about that, Julie, Director of Legislative Affairs. You'll get to know them a little bit more today, and they'll all um, tell you more about what they do as we conduct the day. These are our major goals. Our purpose is to be to connect business and community resources for mutual success. Our mission is to provide programs and services to meet the business and professional development of our members. And our vision is to be the voice of business for the City of Winchester, Clark County, and Frederick County, Virginia. These are our core values, and that little slice is because we're at Appletown. <laughs> Sustainability, leadership, integrity, collaboration, and excellence. Our three strategic goals, our strategic plan was last done in 2019, and we're continuing through this year to increase our membership to 900 members by the end of 2022. Pretty lofty goal in the middle of a pandemic, but we are got to have a goal. So. To maintain financial stability, increasing our reserve account by an average of $10,000 per year at least, and to be the hub of business communication in the region. This past year, I'm particularly proud that we are entering 2022 debt-free. As many of you know, we own our building now uh, with no debt connected to it. Um, so we are in a very sound financial position as we move into 2022. We're also continuing to grow our reserve fund. Uh, we were able to move another $10,000 into our reserve fund. And, and the goal of the reserve fund is to get to a point where we uh, just have a rainy day fund. That um, My goal long term would be that we would have our budget in place before we begin the next year. So that's a long-term goal, but um, it's one we're gonna work towards. And to keep our line of credit at rest, which it has been since June of 2020. In the past year, we had 87 new members and we netted out the year at 754. We have an 85% retention rate of our members and I'm really proud of our staff for the work that they do to keep our members connected and feeling that they are part of a, a viable organization. <clears throat> 85% is a very good rate in our industry. Our email subscribers is over 3,400. So this tells you that we have a strong reach for people to do marketing through us and to hear back from the community. We were still able to provide 124 events and programs in 2021, and I think that in and of itself is pretty amazing. And we did 11 ribbon cuttings. Our marketing reach, we had over 4,000 Facebook likes and we have over 4,680 followers. We have 1,256 Instagram followers and 665 LinkedIn followers and that's typically growing monthly. Again, these are the committees that uh, our board led, finance, marketing, membership, public policy and workforce development. These are our member-led groups, and we really encourage the development of groups like this amongst our mem members who have like um, interests, 
and can support each other. So we have our two lead shares, Valley B2B and the Sing Group, which is a senior interest networking group. We have our marketing mindshare group. So these are industry-led or collaborations amongst our peers that help to strengthen the business of our community. Community partnerships that we've been involved in over the past year. We are a new member of the brand new coalition of grade level reading. This is a coalition that we connected with because we're looking at the long term of workforce development. The coalition of grade level readings goal is to increase the statistics of students who are reading on grade level by the third grade in the city of Winchester. There are statistics that show if a student is not reading by the third grade uh, that they exponentially there is a concern that they will drop out of school after the seventh grade and then the statistics of that being a pipeline to prison are staggering. Um, and so we're trying to encourage that early reading, early childhood education, so that we're developing our students and keeping them successful right from the start, so that in 20 years we've got a viable workforce. We are active in the Sando University School of Business. Uh, I sit on the board of directors for the School of Business. I'm also active in the Shenandoah University brand new Leadership Academy that's being developed. We'll be working closely to um, establish a bridge for internships and developing leaders that will hopefully from Shando University choose to stay in our community after they finish their higher education. We're involved in the Workforce Initiative, which is a regional collaborative between the EDAs, um, human resource folks around the community, educators, um, and with that we've helped to host and market job fairs. Um, we will be conducting or uh, being a part of the Worlds of Work which, if you don't know, is an incredible um, kind of expo where um, businesses come together and um, it's held at the James R. Wilkins Center at Shenandoah University. And we bring in middle schoolers so that they can explore the different worlds of work. They get to see fire trucks and police trucks and um, electrical, um, what do they call those, cherry pickers and they, um, medical centers, um, tables where they can actually try some medical testing and just get a sense of what are the different career paths that they might choose. And then the Widget Cup, which is a um, kind of a creative thinking um, competition between the high school students um, and really highlights manufacturing and innovation. We're also involved in the Shenandoah Apple Blossom Festival with Business at the Bloom, and we help to collaborate this year with the Apple Blossom Festival um, folks and launched the core of the community festival that took place in September. That's a lot. We do a lot. <laughs> our membership is led by our dear Danita Robel. Uh, Danita has been um, an amazing partner for me in these past couple years throughout the pandemic working together to um, just do whatever needed to be done. As many of you know, um, when Jody Wall retired, we took the opportunity to trim down our staff, went lean so that we could save those finances um, as our programs and events kind of scaled back a little bit. That was what uh, one of the major factors that allowed us to pay off the loan that was against the building. Between that and the PPP loan, um, that is what enabled us to um, pay off the loan and become debt free. And it's uh, in large part to Danita's adaptability, flexibility, and just willing to do whatever it takes to get the job done. So, so she's going to tell you a little bit more about what she does with our membership and her staff. Well, she got me all teared up. I know, <laughs> I'm Danita Robo. I'm your Director of Membership and Development. Under me is Dan Hitchcock and Hannah Stewart. Dan actually takes care of our retention. He's a retention specialist, and Hannah is actually um, putting her, we're working towards her getting the new members. Um, I do a lot of the uh, education and, and networking, so I'm busy helping Cynthia as well as increasing um, opportunities for our members to connect and learn. So my membership goals uh, increase uh, members to strengthen our member network and influence, help longstanding members realize the benefits of membership, particularly through TVRC's trusted and far-reaching marketing opportunities, 
and increase membership committee and reinvigorate our ambassadors group. Jim Geiswhite is on my group and so is um, Andy. So we had a great um, Katrina and Scott brought on Darkest for me. So we had a really good meeting the other night. We're pretty proud of where we're gonna go. So super excited about that. Um, our next steps, what we do with um, our members is um, really try to give them next steps of things that they should accomplish through their time with the chamber. Um, we want to elevate our, your, their networking. Um, we want them to attend events, our lunch and learns, our business after hours, get involved, our professional, uh, young professional groups, and of course, sing in Valley B2B are our lead share groups. Hopefully, I'm working with um, trying to find leaders to build that lead share group so that we have more to offer. There's a lot of paid lead share groups in the area with chamber membership. That's part of your membership. It's a benefit of membership. So if I build that, people are paying eight to $1,000 a year to be in a networking group. If I can build those networking groups, I think that that's going to bring in even more members. Elevating their business by having a ribbon cutting <clears throat> because we do marketing for them that goes into the newsletter and on social media. For them to take advantage of marketing, uh, which you'll be thrilled to see what we're doing this year. Um, we have lots of opportunities and of course to sponsor an event. Um, and with Julie at hand to elevate their voice through legislative affairs. So our business after hours this year, uh, and I just attended yesterday a Virginia Chamber of Commerce executive group um, and sat in with a lot of other leaders in Virginia, uh, their chambers. They are, they've never had anything all year. Nobody got together. They're still working from home. And I'm proud because we, we, everybody can make their decisions, right? So we had eight events just for business after hours this year. Each, each one of those, those events had between 75 and 100 people. Uh, people wanted to get out. They were so appreciative. We received emails afterwards all the time uh, thanking us for the opportunity to be able to get together. So real proud of that. Um, gave, a lot, gave away lots of money this year too with uh, Bank of Clark County and the Bowman oh, yeah. ribbon cutting. <clears throat> The, between the two of them, I think we they gave away at our events this year. They gave away over a hundred thousand dollars. I think it was. This was such a fun event. It was a ribbon cutting at Bowman Library, which is we were. They were uh, was their anniversary, right? And so uh, the lady in the middle, um, Bev Shoemaker, um, is a uh, benefactor. Um, so it, she was so she she had this little check. We didn't know about it. She takes this little check no, out and she's she like, putting out this little check for, I think it was $100,000 yeah. to the Bowman Library. It was, so, it was so, yeah. so amazing to be a part of it. And, and you know, the richness of our community in light of, of parts of giving. Yes. I mean, the money's great too, but just the generosity that we see in our community. Is yeah, amazing. and for everybody to be involved and be able to see that, it was quite an experience and, and really exciting. Um, Bank of Clark County uses their mixer every year to give away their funds that they receive from their golf tournaments. Uh, and I think this year they gave away over $20,000, I believe. So that was really exciting. I'm going to introduce Miss Vanessa McAllister, who came to us from Valley Health. I'm so excited to be working with her and for her to be taking over programs and events. <laughs> Thank you. Hi everyone, I am Vanessa McAllister, excited to be your Director of Programs and Events. Going to share with you some of the things we have planned for this year. So first we'll start off with our signature events. We have our Greater Good Awards coming up March 24th at Shenandoah Valley Golf Club. And what I'd really love to see this year also are silent auction items from all of your businesses. We'd love to have lots of neat things to give away that night. So if you have anything that you'd like to give away, please let us know. We'll get you the information you need. And then also, um, we have our selection committee that is getting ready to get together to pick those award winners. So we're excited about that. And if you don't have your tickets yet, please go online and register. Um, registration is open. Um, Corey will share with you later about our new website. 
but all of that information will roll to our new site. So we'd like to get you registered for the event itself. Our awards are for you. They're for our members and for our businesses. We want to recognize you for all the great things you're doing in your companies and in your community. So we will, um, I'll show you in a minute the winners from last year, some of the categories, but we will be representing, um, we're selecting members for large business of the year, small business of the year, nonprofit of the year, um, help me emerging leader of the year, citizen of the year, entrepreneur of the year. We have a new award this year, our Lifetime Community Impact Award. So it could be someone that's won a citizen of the year in the past, but we feel like they are still working in their community. They are still doing lots of great things. So think of someone that's doing things that have done things for years and years and years. We would like to bring that person and elevate them and celebrate them with a Lifetime Community Impact Award. And then we'll also be selecting a legacy member which is based off your years of membership. I think last year Wilkins Shoe Center was recognized for over 73, 73 years as a chamber member. So this year I think we have several that are in the 60 something range. So we'll be excited to recognize them as well. And then also back this year, we are gonna do our corporate challenge and we have lots of exciting things planned, but I'm actually not gonna unveil those yet because they're still in the works and I want to have something to tell you later. So you can't know everything today. And then also our Valor Awards are scheduled for September. Um, last year, we had our Greater Good Awards at the Alamo Draft House. I'd like to thank Corey and Danita and the team. I wasn't here, of course, but they did an excellent job in light of the pandemic and still hosting those awards at the Alamo Draft House. And it went off without a hitch, but I'd really like to have you hear one of the speeches. Um, if you weren't there and didn't get to experience it, I'd like you to hear one of our gracious winners. Uh, wow. Um, first off, uh, thank you. Um, a, few, a few thank yous. Um, to my wife, Chelsea. Uh, I think she deserves probably the, the greatest thanks. Uh, my two boys. Um, at home uh, watching this. I'm not sure why you're alone right now, but thank you. Um, thank you for, uh, for putting up with my obsessive and um, overwhelming schedule and everything I threw at you uh, over the last year. Um, to the chamber staff, board of directors, and members, because of this organization, uh, I have made connections that are now friendships, mentorships, and beyond. It all started here. Um, I offer a sincere, sincere thank you to everyone in here. Uh, to my 150 plus teammates at uh, our Baltimore facility uh, and to the leadership at Green Bay Packaging, you've given me an opportunity to be part of such a wonderful organization uh, and I look forward to succeeding with every uh, one of you. You know, I feel like when you're a recipient of an award like this, uh, you want to say something that will inspire, motivate, or at least entertain uh, the audience. Uh, one of my main goals in life is to make a difference in someone's life every single day. Uh, and at the end of this, I hope I will have accomplished that. Throughout my life, as many of you, there's been a lot of ups and a lot of downs. The highs, marriage, my children, athletic achievement and success at work, and the lows, death, personal loss and disappointment have each taught me something. And seeing that I'm a millennial, um, I wanted to speak directly to the younger generation. Lesson number one, control the controllables. Sometimes, it feels like someone else is pulling the strings and we've lost all control. However, here are a few things that you indeed do control. Your attitude, your effort, your emotions, your beliefs, who you associate with, and how much you appreciate the things you currently have. When you take a step back and realize how much you are actually in control, your path becomes clear and success follows. Only 25 more points, young people. Lesson two. Water your own grass. Just kidding, not 25. People sometimes forget to take care of where they are. The grass is not greener on the other side. The grass is greenest where you water it. Invest in you. Dedicate yourself to your team, your family, and your professional growth, and watch how far you go. Lesson three, quality over quantity. Many people today believe that being productive means being busy, when in reality, that just isn't true. We, you can be busy all day and still get nothing achieved. So take a step back and ask yourself, what is important to get accomplished today? What is important to get accomplished this month and this year and work on that? Lesson four, find a tribe and build something great together. Dwayne Johnson once said, 
What you do isn't nearly as important as who you do it with. At the end of the day, you can put all the effort you want, but if you're not with the right partners, you aren't going to reap the benefits of your hard work. It's so important to surround yourself with the right people because you are the average of the five people you associate with most. In closing, I truly hope that what I've shared connected with at least one person somewhere and made a difference. Thank you to everyone who has helped me get to this point in my life and a future thanks to those who helped me get to that next step. Thank you and God bless. Congratulations, Greg. I'm, I'm so proud. <laughs> Greg grew up across the street from me and the number of times that I heard him throwing a tennis ball against the garage door as he was pitching in his driveway to watch him grow up I'm very, very proud, very happy for you, Greg. And I'm also feeling really old right now. But congratulations, well deserved. And Mike will be back with us this year as this year's MC. So please get your tickets and come out and celebrate our award winners. This is just a snapshot of all of our winners from last year. Again, our legacy business of the year was Wilkin Shoe Center. Circle of Excellence was Valley Health and the Lord Fairfax Health District. Entrepreneur of the Year was Mr. Tom Stamulus. Small Business of the Year, Kimberly's Large Business of the Year, Yacht Hot and Barber. Emerging Leader was Greg Vossler, of course. Nonprofit of the Year was Valley Assistance Network. And our Citizen of the Year was Dr. Nick Restrepo. So um, this year, again, we've talked about our corporate challenge. We will be holding that in June, unveiling that information at a later date. And then last year, our Valor Awards were part of, as Cynthia mentioned, the core of the community. That was a collaboration of the Concern Hotline, Shenandoah Apple Blossom Festival, and ourselves. Uh, we had 300 in attendance last year, which I thought was a great attendance as well. So we're looking forward to this year. But first, um, if you missed it, you missed a lot. But here's one of our speeches from our gracious winners last year. It's not nerve wracking enough to be up here. Y'all bear with me. Everybody hear me okay? Yes? Oh, okay. All right. Anyways, good evening. I'm not going to take much of your time. I'm a street cop, I'm not a politician, so just bear with me. Uh, start off with saying uh, it's been an honor to be here, to be uh, part of the representation of the Winchester Police Department in this year's Valid Awards. I would like to thank the top of Virginia Regional Chamber of Commerce for honoring me, my fellow officers, the other members of various departments, and the community members who you feel have been a positive influence in our community. Over the many, over many years, the Chamber has been gracious to us and others through the Valor Awards. Your support and the support to this community is very important to us all. <clears throat> As far as the events of November, uh, of November 11th, 2020, that day changed many lives for us. It will never be forgotten. I'm shaking if you guys can't see me. That morning, I met my squad, these guys, as we always do, for paperwork. Uh, meeting in the patrol room, talking, having a good time. Just talking about the random stuff, laughing, so forth. We were prepared for the road, uh, went to get breakfast, as we usually do at our favorite spot. No, I'm not telling you where that's at. Get fuel, get ready before all the calls come in. I remember driving down Pleasant Valley Road when that call came out. As Andrea said, two units were dispatched. Shortly thereafter, I heard the units mark on scene and the day and the events unfolded from there. I can tell you, we prepare for that day our entire careers, but that day we were ready. There's not a day that goes by that uh, myself and others don't run through that 
in our minds over and over again. I can tell you that our training focus and the ability to make quick decisions is why we went home to our families that day. When a crisis does present itself, most of us are ready to do battle, help someone, or even give our life for others. And I praise God for watching over us that day and every day. I want to thank each and every one of you who has supported us and reached out to us. It truly shows the love for my brothers and sisters in this profession. I want to thank the command staff at the Winchester Police Department for their support to us, to the department, and its continued support to the community and our officers. I want to thank the families who have supported us through the shift changes, coming home late, working overtime, holidays, missing events, and a lot, lot more. We would not be who we are today without them by our sides. And I'm going to leave you with one of my favorite Bible verses. And I'm not a preacher, but I do read the Bible. And it's in Psalms 23, 4. And it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley as the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Thank you. there in person and I've seen this several times still it gets me every time um, so last year's winners of course the gentle one you just heard from and we had 41 other award winners so if you're missing valor you're missing a lot so we'd hope to see all of you out this year in September and on a happier note we're taking one of our programs that we've had Valley Business Women and we are going to develop a fourth event this year so we will have Valley Business Women Night Out. We would like this to be a fun-filled evening for our women in business, our, vendor, our women-led vendors, our women-led sponsors, our women-led leaders, what have you, women all around. Bring your friends, bring your family, bring your sisters, bring your mothers, daughters. We would like everyone to come out. We are gonna do this night out to celebrate you. And then we're hoping that after this fourth quarter event on November 3rd, that next year, we will have businesses step up and be Valley Business Women leaders that will host smaller events in our first three quarters. So put that on your calendar, put, wrap that around your minds there and think of things you can do in your businesses and your areas of focus that we can celebrate our women in business. Um, we're excited about it. And then we also are growing our Leadership Academy and it's gonna focus on three different areas our rising leaders, this program is in the development stage right now, but we would like to focus on our high school students before they get out into the world of business and grow our TVRC foundation so we can offer scholarships to this group of individuals. And then this year new, we have our business leadership program. Our inaugural class is kicking off on January 26th, the next week, with Mr. Kerry Dunstan as our presenter. He's a former American Woodmark CEO with his own program, Life Leader 360. So we're excited about that. And then of course, our community leadership program, which is tried and true, it's in its 25th year. So we're excited to celebrate our anniversary this year with this year's class. Our graduation is scheduled for June 3rd. So we are gonna graduate our CLP class that's currently in the program, but also welcome back any CLP alumni to join us at that event. So any CLP alums in the room? Woo, great, hoping to see you on June 3rd for that celebration. And then of course, you've heard some from Zanita and you'll hear more from Cynthia and from Corey. Other programming we have, of course, are our Lunch and Learn series, our Legislative Affairs series, which Julie will talk about, our Young Professionals group, which we are trying to get going again and grow that group, and then of course, our Lead Share groups as well. Good afternoon, I'm Harry Smith, Market President with United Bank. I'd like to speak with you a little bit about why I and United Bank are members of the Chamber, more particularly why we are a sponsor of events with the Chamber of Commerce. Membership for me is extremely important as a former board member and former chairperson. I see daily the good that the Chamber of Commerce does for our businesses a business organization helping local businesses. That's really what it's all about. Let's talk for a moment about sponsorship. 
and why I believe and my bank believes in a sponsorship of the Chamber of Commerce. Again, it's a little extra money, but that money goes to support our chamber which again is a business supporting our businesses. Yes, there's added benefits to being a sponsor and those are important, but it's more important to me and to my company that our sponsorship helps our members become better businesses in this community and better members of the Chamber of Commerce. Hello, I am Corey Campbell. I'm no longer that good looking anymore, <laughs> but I'm here to speak to you today. Um, and, and show you some of the things, the wonderful things we have going on as far as the marketing department goes at the top of Virginia Regional Chamber. Our directory. Our directory is out. And this is this year's cover, a wonderful picture by Lori Bridgeforth that she had taken at the Flags of Honor, or Fields of Honor, uh, out there at Hanley. We also have our street map, so if you're into real estate, you're into somebody who, into some of our hospitality industries, this is a great way to connect with your clients. Um, it's a great way to advertise, to get into other uh, people's clients and things like that. Uh, but that is in, in the works as well. Our Chamber News. So monthly we put out the Chamber News. It's the voice of business and industry in the Winchester Star. It's an insert. Uh, it comes out on the second Wednesday of the month. And what that is, is it's a 12 to 20 page, depending on what we have going on. So some of our larger events will have larger editions. Um, but it really kind of recaps the, the month that we've, of things that we've done, lets people know what's coming up. Uh, and it's also a good way to advertise your business and, and get some things out there. That's getting out to about 15,000 readers through the Winchester Star distribution, and that's all the, the covers of what we did in 2021. On your tables and out now is Chris Mitchell from the Valor Awards. Uh, he came out and was our MC this year, did a wonderful job, uh, and it's made the cover and on your table. So a couple of the complimentary uh, benefits that we offer to our members. You can always bring business cards, brochures, pamphlets, flyers, anything like that. We keep that stuff up in the chamber lobby, so it's great for members who are coming in and grabbing that stuff quickly. They can, again, get it out to their clients or use, the, use you themselves. We do offer both membership decals for your windows and for your websites. We offer a community calendar to be able to post any events that you may have going on. Job postings, job postings are really a big thing right now. Being able to find employees is, is one of our biggest issues that we're facing with our membership. So this is a great way to get those jobs out onto Facebook, um, get them out into other members and let them know those uh, jobs you have available. Hot deals, if you've got something really special going on, you've got some coupons, uh, you can get things out that way to membership. We also have reinvigorated the market space uh, program within the chamber. Hot deals is great if you've got a, a, a wonderful deal on something, but Market Space is an awesome place for members to be able to make what they're worth. This is selling at full value on Market Space, where Hot Deals is a little bit more to get that item off the shelves. News releases, if you've got something important going on in your business, please let us know. We will get it out into our top of mind, which is our email blast. We can get it out in the voice of business and industry, which is the newsletter that you just saw. Request for proposals feature. This is a way that you can get some get into the local governments and be able to reach out to them and, and throw out some requests. If you're not using our Facebook Chamber Connect group, that's a great place again to free, uh, for free, advertise things that you have going on in your business. Um, and then any, any Chamber updates. If you have a new employee, you have a new set of hours, you wanted to spotlight somebody, we get these updates out in our top of mind emails. Um, and then we get into some paid marketing opportunities as well. We do have a new website. Is It, it is in the process of migrating literally right now. So um, you may see it right away. It, they say sometimes it does take a few hours. But this site is soon to be up and running, if not already. It's just really the same information, just a little fresher look, um, a little cleaner to get to the information and to find uh, what you need there. How can you find out about these opportunities? We have done two documents, sponsorship opportunities. So these are gonna be events, programs, uh, different things that you can get into there. Uh, this is gonna be more your pure marketing opportunity. So that's getting into the newsletter. That's gonna have rates for the Win Life TV advertising. Um, it's got email blasts and things like that. So really some, some great opportunities. Next, I'd like to welcome Miss Julie Schaefer. Julie was added to the mix maybe six months ago. Been a, been a little bit. Uh, but we're, we're happy to have her, we're proud to have her, and please welcome her to the podium.
morning and thank you. Um, as Corey said, it's, this is a new position for the chamber. I just started in September. So since then, I've been kind of getting the lay of the land and getting to know all of you um, and working on an advocacy toolkit. You've heard the word elevate a lot this morning, and basically that is my goal, to increase member engagement and elevate our voice in this region. We're the fastest growing region in Virginia, if you, if you read that article. So we really need to get out there, get our fair share, have people hear from us. This toolkit is a basically a why, what, where, why is grassroots advocacy important for your business? Um, what can you do? Anything from writing about an issue you're having to one of your elected officials, to writing a letter to the editor, to hosting a member at your facility, to visiting you know that member in their office, whether it's on the federal level, if you go to DC, or you go to Richmond on the state level, or, you know, most importantly, a lot of things start local. So working with your with our local board of supervisors and that sort of thing. It, it's, it's fairly comprehensive, but of course it, it can encompass everything. So I hope that you will use that as a starting point to learn and then get in touch with me and I can help you make a plan that will be the most effective for your, for your business. Uh, the, the strategy this year you know, we talked about the Legislative Affairs Series. We had our pre-session breakfast. We were supposed to be at Chamber Day in Richmond last week, which got canceled, which hopefully will be postponed. But we plan to spend some, some time in Richmond. I'm going to schedule some Zoom calls with our officials so that we can still hear from them about what's going on in session and ask questions and still be engaged, even if we can't be there. We are trying to get Governor Yunkin here in April, but that's still in the work, so we're not gonna we're not gonna say anything about that just yet until we have some more information. Uh, we want to get well. I'll talk about Ben Klein in a second, but um, we're gonna maybe host some debates for the November election, which would be really cool. Just get people energized. Um, legislation that we are watching. These are just. A few of the things that we're watching, but obviously a session goes on, there's going to there's gonna be more coming out. If there's something in particular that's affecting your business, please let me know so that we can keep an eye on it. You know, the Governor Yunkin's um, vaccine announcement that businesses, you know, didn't have to mandate it was huge for, for this area. And all those, all, those, all those kind of things we're going to have on the website too as updates come so it's more accessible and you know right away if there's any updates that you need to know about. Redistricting is a big thing right now. I'll give you the high level highlights and if you have any questions or you know you want to talk more about it, I'm happy to answer those as the day goes on. But basically, as far as Congress goes, Jennifer Wexton is currently our representative, and that will change. We will move into the 6th District, which is basically from here down to Roanoke, and it kind of hugs the western border, includes the whole Shenandoah Valley, and Ben Klein is currently the member in that district. So he is, you know, the whole Congress is up for re-election in November, so that could change, but right now, that which, it, which makes sense. It's it's a more cohesive constituency. It make it right now. We're we're kind of you know Northern Virginia and we're sharing resources and it's a little. Um, it doesn't make as much sense. So hopefully that will be a good step for us. The state senate. So Jill Vogel is currently our state senator, and that will change. She does not. We have there's a new. Senate District, we will be in Senate District 1. And now we're talking about people in, you know, Ben Klein, Jennifer Wexton, that's Congress, Washington, D.C., State Senate, we're talking about Richmond, and we there's a, they're creating a new District 1, which we will now be in District 1 for State Senate, and that is a brand new district, so there is no incumbent. So Jill, I guess Jill will have to decide whether she, she'd want to move um, but she has a beautiful house in Upperville, so I'm not sure if she would do that or not. Um, but I don't know. That'll be an interesting race to watch since it's a brand new, brand new district. And then the House of Delegates, Bill Wiley, Dave <coughs> Rock, and Wendy Goditis are currently the delegates in our jurisdiction, and that will change as well. That gets a little wonky, and that's that's one of the things we can talk about more too. But basically, we'll now only have two delegates in our jurisdiction the way it was redrawn.
So um, we'll keep an eye on that. And we are we have partners. Virginia Chamber of Commerce um, is the biggest one that you know I keep an eye on for legislation that affects. Um, they they host a lot of the events we attend in Richmond. Virginia West is a new group that we just joined. It's sort of that northwestern part of the state. It's just a, um, a group that works together to make sure that our issues in this part of Virginia are heard, and uh, and go Virginia. So anyway, we're 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 getting there. It's a it's a good start. I want to hear from you and get to know what your issues are. And if you have any questions for me, please feel free to reach out. And if you haven't heard. Cynthia is going to come back up here. She was in Richmond this past Saturday for the inauguration. Super cool. She had VIP seats, and she's going to tell you a little bit more about that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so uh, my husband and I uh, had the privilege of uh, being guest of um, Lieutenant Governor Winsome Earl Sears at the inauguration. Um, Uh, so amazing seats, uh, an amazing privilege to be a part of that. If you don't know, uh, Winsome Sears is a local Frederick County resident who is representing us. Um, so I'm so excited about the future of our region and how um, not only is it growing, but I think um, the attention that we'll begin to get is growing. Um, if you saw yesterday, Colin Green, who has been the head of our health department, has also been slated to go to the state level. So again, kind of bringing the voice of our region uh, and attention to what goes on here. Um, some, I've heard the delegates call us the uh, red-headed stepchild of Virginia because most attention goes to Northern Virginia region, excuse me, Richmond and the Hampton Roads area. Um, and so we know that we need some attention. There's some issues that need to be addressed in our region, um, particularly transportation. Um, to be able to support um, the growth that's going on here, workforce development. I was um, particularly um, thrilled to hear Governor Yunkin support of business. Um, I think we have done a good job in the last number of years, um, but I think there were some protections that need to be had, and we know that he supports the right to work, and that's a big issue that is um, on the table again this year. Um, he sees the importance of education, and we know that uh, we really have to be looking at the long term in order to build our workforce by looking at education alongside workforce development um, and health care, um, understanding that, and support of our public safety officials. Uh, I also got to sit right behind the new Secretary of Public Safety. He's from Fauquier County, um, so that was uh, a good connection to be made. Um, so really thrilled to be a part of that, and, and um, as, as I've probably shared with you all, public policy is not my background. Uh, this is all pretty new to me um, in coming into this role, but this was really helpful for me to begin to get the grasp of things and to get um, the energy behind what can happen when you change legislation. You can really change uh, the world with legislation. I think the two biggest areas I see where you change the world are um, education and um, legislation. So that was a great privilege. and. Um, Glad to be looking, going, looking forward to going back and making those connections, having um, personal inroads to um, get there and get to the right people to get things done in our region. So, okay. so we this will be the official part of the um, this. So this presentation will now go out to our membership since we weren't able to hold the state of the chamber event that we had hoped to today. This will now go out to all of our members so that they can see what we've done, hopefully entice them uh, to be active in our events and engaging more in the things that we're doing in the year to come. Um, big thank you to our volunteers. You know, whenever we do an event or um, run a program, it takes a lot of hands on deck, and we're a small staff. We, I'm amazed at what we get accomplished, but it does take great volunteers um, and sponsors uh, to really help get things done. So I do want to give a special recognition to our sponsors for the upcoming year. Our Chamber Elite sponsors are First Bank and Valley Health. Our Chairman's Level sponsors are the Bank of Clark County, Rappahannock Electric Cooperative, Tech Team Solutions, and United Bank. And our President's Level sponsors American Woodwork, Woodmark, Blue Ridge Bank, Cardinal Technologies, Cundiff & Associates, 
City National Bank, Dr. Dave Leadership Corporation, Grafton, Miller's Supplies at Work, Navy Federal Credit Union, Truist, formerly BB&T, and YHB. And then we have media sponsors uh, that we collaborate with, again, to help be the hub of business and a voice of the business world, and that is iHeartMedia and The River 95.3. Uh, monthly, we do a radio show uh, that highlights the chamber, um, a podcast with Janet Michael um, called The Valley Today. So we get the opportunity, and we'll be um, recording that next week, uh, introducing Scott Harvard as our new chair of the board and talking to the community about what we'll be doing in the year to come. So we thank you again, all of our chamber membership, our volunteers, our sponsors. Uh, have a great day doing business in the top of Virginia.